My wife and I owned a bakery for five years. It was okay for me, but it was mostly her deal. She found her passion in baking, and I was her willing assistant. My passion, however, was in voice acting and impersonations. I was just starting to make some money on the side by utilizing my skill, so I usually didn't want to be at the bakery. My wife was growing annoyed with me because I didn't share her passion. I didn't think it would drive a wedge between us, but it did. One day, I was helping my wife at the bakery when a returning customer stopped by. I knew him, AP, for years, but when he came in this time, he looked disappointed that I was the one approaching the counter. He appeared to consider leaving the bakery altogether, which I thought was weird. I took his order for his daughter's birthday cake, and he kept glancing into the back. He asked how my wife was doing. After he left, I told my wife he was in and placed an order. She looked at me with interest, then looked away, bummed. Her hands were covered in dough, while she told me she enjoys being the one to interact with customers because she has pride in our business. I just said something like, uh-huh, because I wanted to go home and record voices. Another day, when her cell phone buzzed on the counter out front, her hands were messy again, so I went to glance at it to see if it was important or business-related. She looked worried as I walked by. When I looked at it, I realized why. It was a text from the aforementioned married father that ordered his daughter's birthday cake. As my wife prepared the cake, he texted her, asking if she was free to come over again that night at 7, since his wife and kids wouldn't be home. My jaw dropped as I stared at it. Another text came through that said he missed her body. I entered the passcode to my wife's phone for the first time in a year. Thankfully, she hadn't changed it. As I scrolled up, my eyes scanned over a plethora of naughty, sexting, nudes, and affair messages. My wife was getting antsy in the back room, asking me who it was from. I told her it was a spam email that tricked me for a second. She laughed a little and looked relieved as she put the little girl's cake in the oven. I told my wife I needed to go home because I had some voice acting things to work on. I knew she would believe me and leave me alone about it, because fighting me on it never worked. I actually sat in my car nearby and stared at my wife's GPS location. I never relied on this before, and I could only hope she wouldn't turn it off. I held my breath when she started moving down the road. I started following her and seconds later, a text came through from my wife that said she'll be closing the store late because a huge order was placed. My heart broke at this very moment. Then I saw her GPS turn a different way, and I knew we were over. She was sleeping with our married customer. I kept driving, just barely able to stay focused. I felt the blood moving through my body at an alarming speed. She hadn't turned off the locator, so she led me straight to AP's house, just as she was getting out of the car, and his front door was opening. I met them both at his front door, and I can't even recall what I was saying. Only that I was just yelling and staring at them. AP didn't know what to do besides yell sorry and try to shut the door as fast as possible, but I stopped him by punching him in the face. He fell to the floor just inside his house, unconscious. My wife was speechless and red in the face. I asked her to explain herself, but she couldn't speak due to shock and embarrassment. She freaked out that I punched him, but then all she could say was sorry. The affair fog cleared and she realized we were standing in front of AP's house, all because she started an affair with him. A married man and father who shouldn't have been anything more than our customer. I started yelling again because I thought of our wedding day and the day we started our business. I dashed back to the car before the tears came from realizing the life we had was changed forever and she probably did this more than once. I thought about all the messages they sent and how she lied to me. Sadness turned into anger, so I drove home, leaving her standing in AP's driveway. I packed stuff and printed notices to put on the bakery windows. As she arrived home, I was driving down the street to return to AP's house. The front door was closed now, with another car in the driveway. All looked peaceful, but that wouldn't last. In their mailbox on their doors, in some of their bushes, and a few on the windows, I put copies of my notice. It named my wife and AP in a sexual scandal that deemed the bakery filthy. I quoted some of the filthy things they said to each other and one nude of each. Then I informed the health department. Hours later, the whole town was freaking out. People started talking really fast about the scandal. You don't realize what a small world it is until it comes crashing down.
My wife closed the business before the divorce was final and before the health department officially ordered her to close because her customer base was gone. She left the state alone with her SUV packed full, headed to someone she met online seeking a roommate. I got to keep our house since she couldn't afford it without the bakery, so I sold it, and just like that, everything we made together was dissolved. During all this, she did try reaching out to me, which is how I found out that AP was divorced, but they wouldn't continue to see each other. He had to move 120 miles in the opposite direction. She always said sorry and that she understood why I ended it. I asked her why this happened, and all she could say was that he greatly admired her cooking and flattered her by saying things like he wished she was his wife. I told her I wouldn't wish for her to be anyone's wife. I stopped answering her calls after that. I knew she was probably scared or going through a lot, and I didn't want my emotions getting involved in her karma. I am healing and doing well. With the profit I got from the house that I never wanted to see again, I got a really sweet new place to call my home. It includes a home office for my voice acting and impersonation career. OP, I am so glad you recovered from this ordeal the way you did. It was so lucky that you found AP's messages. As hard as it was to go through this, you had to discover the truth, and you got them to follow through with their sneaky behavior to catch them in the act. They were very bold, inconsiderate, and careless. AP even knew who you were and ignored the fact that he was stealing your wife's honor and love. The least he deserved was a punch in the face and to lose the family he betrayed. I understand why you freaked out. Your wife and AP didn't deserve to get away with living a double life while they had loving spouses at home. You are an example of what to do and how to handle infidelity. Thank you for sharing this story. I wish you the best of luck. Now let's get into our second story for today. My wife and I lived in California for the entirety of our relationship. We met when we were in college, both 19 years old. She was in theater and movie acting. She enjoyed acting in plays, but her dream was to be in the movies. She was lovely and already had some jobs as a model. I was smitten. I was majoring in behavioral psychology. We married after she graduated, and I continued my studies while she got roles in any play or movie she could find. She was always at rehearsal while I was at work, and occasionally when I was home. Sometimes I was invited to her rehearsals, but those invitations stopped when she got the lead female role in one romantic comedy play. She came home later and was gone way more during this play than all the other ones. By this time, we were married for three years. I asked if I could go to one of these rehearsals, and she said these were private. I thought that was weird. She got free tickets for her family to come when it was finally time for the performance. We all attended on the same night. Her mother, father, sister, and me. She was a beautiful, convincing actress. The male lead in the play seemed to have great chemistry with her, but nothing convinced me so much as the passionate kiss at the end. I'd seen her kiss in other plays, but this one seemed different. I was convinced my worries were valid when she looked at him instead of me after the show was over. Her own father made a comment that fed into my worry. He said she could rip out any man's heart because it looked like she was in love with that man. We got to meet the cast, but my wife introduced us oddly to her male co-star. She introduced her mom and dad as her mom and dad, but then she only introduced her sister and I by our first names. Like we could have been friends of hers or a couple. I told her my worries later that night after our celebratory dinner. She admitted she felt bonded to him, and they had a great time together during all the preparation for the play. I asked her to stop talking to him completely after closing night. She looked devastated and said if I'd reconsider, she planned to work with him again. It was because of the on-stage chemistry, I was so uncomfortable with that she saw her career's potential to blossom with him as her co-star. I took this opportunity to ask her a few questions, since she wanted me to reconsider. I asked if they ever hung out alone without my knowledge. She looked a little embarrassed but said yes. I asked why, and she said it was to rehearse their lines and eat dinner. I asked if it was like a date, and she said she didn't see it that way, but she wasn't sure what he thought. I asked if he knew I was her husband, and she said she introduced me. I pointed out she only said my name, and she looked confused like she didn't remember doing that. Following the awkward silence, I told her I didn't want her to contact him or work with him again. She looked really upset and kind of angry. She said she didn't deserve to be controlled. 
I told her this wasn't something she could fight me on. It was a matter of keeping our marriage true and honest, without anything that would make one of us uncomfortable. Well, she did eventually tell me she'd stop talking to him, but one month and many long absences later, I knew she could still be meeting up with him and doing things without my knowledge. One day, five or so months later, my wife and I were actually spending time together outside when she took an Instagram selfie without me. It showed the back of our house and location, which is part of the reason why AP jumped our fence. The other reason is that my wife had apparently stopped talking to him for a few days, and now he knew why. It was because he saw me and realized she was married. Of course, I recognized him from the play. My wife was freaking out and trying to say she hadn't seen him since the play. He didn't want to say anything when he realized she was betraying him, but I told him if he didn't want me to call the cops for his trespassing, he needed to be honest and tell me if they were having an affair. He said they were, but he hadn't heard from her, and now that he knew she was married, he wouldn't see her again. After he left, my wife told me not to believe him. She said he'd been trying to see her again ever since the play, but she refused without telling him why, so he lost it. Well, I'd have to be a fool if I didn't at least investigate what AP said. So I checked my wife's phone and her dismay, found her WhatsApp, and made her lodge in under threat of divorce. There were all the messages with AP. She only stopped talking to him for three days, but there was evidence she had sex with him at his house several times after they went out together on dates. They were a full-blown couple since the play. I showed her family via screenshots sent from her phone before I smashed it. Then I kicked her out, and she begged me to give her a second chance. She said she realized now that it was just an infatuation, and beyond their acting skills, they had nothing in common, and she didn't want to sleep with him or anyone else besides me ever again. I told her she might as well join the Coven of Nuns because she would never have me again. I trusted her, supported her, and wanted to build a great life with her. After I kicked her out, she tried countless times to break in, so I got a restraining order until our divorce was final, then the house was officially mine. OP, I am sorry your wife fell for a man that was never meant to be hers. I'm sorry she lied to you about it and kept her marriage to you a secret from him. She doesn't deserve to be given a second chance after something like this. She would never respect you in the same way, knowing she could get away with cheating whenever she felt like it, and always count on you to keep a roof over her head. I am proud of you for all the actions you took, and that you didn't give in to her begging. It takes a strong person to be able to handle this the way you did. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.